Welcome back to TSN 69 in the first half. I'm Paul Debaye and I am joined in studio by PY Letelier. Like I said, we got him back. Take two is going to be better than take one. So it actually works out perfectly. And because it's a musically heavy episode, we got to let we got to let the music play a little, little intros, a little, just a little longer. Oh, yeah. Oh, right? Yeah. Let her go. Let, let it, it rip. Let it rip. Let it let rip. Let it rip. Uh, Thank you for joining us. Honestly, it's a, it's a pleasure. I was mentioning to you just before we came on air, one of the uh, fun things that the first half has allowed me to do is to get to actually speak to you guys just a little bit longer. Normally, our conversations are sort of quick um, because everybody is busy. It's the world we live in. And this has been a great opportunity for me to take a few minutes to get to know how amazing you know you guys are and and. It's appreciative to have you in my life. I'm being dead serious with this. And so this is, you know, I thank you for coming in, man. Thank you very much for having me, man. I appreciate uh, you bringing us in and having the show every week. I listen every week. For those that don't know, you have been supporting Goal for quite a while now, for years. And so has the entire band, the whole crew. And we put together with one of an artist in your world, a really cool football scarf, if you remember. It even was in the merch section of the Damn Truth Touring. I, I'm telling you to the listeners that are out there, the one or two or ten, whoever's out there listening to this, I flipped. I remember, remember how excited I was to actually, we got this done oh, yeah. and we had it made and we had it ready. We got it just in time. Right? Like, yeah. I just... That's how we live. That's on the how, edge. Yeah. <laughs> Rock and roll, baby! <laughs> Rock and roll! All right, so listen, for those that don't know, please give us a little background on yourself and how you got into music. And then, because the bio read I gave is a, is a short one. It's sweet and it's, it's qu- you know, it's, it's, the, it's the media bio, like the, the web yeah. bio. How did this, how did you get into music? And then definitely how did you get into and with The Damn Truth? Right. Well, uh, I grew up in a very small town in the lower north shore of Quebec. And uh, there's not much to do there, especially back then. So it was mostly sports and music. Everybody was very musically talented, very folk, country-oriented there. A lot of acoustic guitars, spoons, accordions, and fiddles. So music uh, permeated my reality, you know, as well as hockey. Um, So after... I turned around, I don't know, 14, 15, when you got to start thinking about what you're going to do. Because there, after high school, you got to move. You either go out to work in the oil sands or you go to school. And I decided to go to school in music. I ended up in Montreal at Vanier, where I met a lot. You know how the city here is just hustling and bustling, but it's such a small world. You know, once you get in, you start meeting people and you find out it's... Once you meet one person, you know everybody. And then... uh, one day I was after this is after college I was playing in an art gallery with uh, a band of mine called Perfect Strangers and the manager of the Damn Truth was there it was his gallery <laughs> really and, yeah his gallery and he's like uh, do you want to jam with this band called the Damn Truth have you heard of them and I was I I thought that I had but I wasn't sure and but you know I'm a yes man so I was like You're not a yeah yes man, man let's do it I want, let's jam let's do it and then when we we met up. Uh, it just felt really right. The music was really up my alley because, I mean, I studied in jazz. And ever since I moved to Montreal, it felt like I was searching for rock and roll. There was no rock and roll to be found. It's where I realized I grew up 10 years in the past somehow. Uh, in that yeah, little you definitely, town, yeah, you know? yeah, that's right. Yeah, for sure. There's a little bit of a delay. <laughs> yeah, there was a big delay. You know, I remember I got uh, Doritos barbecue bowl like eight years after they came out. They showed up <laughs> so on the amazing. shelf, you know. So Amazing. same thing for the music. I arrive in Montreal. I'm like, what's this new sound? What's this this stuff? You know. So, the closest thing I can get to rock and roll was jazz. So I was in the jazz scene for a while, and then metal came, and uh, that's how I met just a bunch of people, which eventually led to me uh, starting the band Perfect Strangers with a friend of mine, Khalil, which led me to the art gallery, which led me to meet Ralph, our manager, which led me to jam with the Damn Truth, my family. That's so cool. So and then that obviously that that first meetup. This is a question as a non-musician. So that first meetup, is it like a first day of school, that first day of class totally. where you're like, everybody's a little bit nervous, like, totally. is this going to work out? How am I even in the intro? What's the handshake like? Yeah. What am I going to say? Do we dive right into it? What if I mess up one of the songs? You know, like... 100%. That ser- yeah, is it? Yeah, Shaking okay, cool. in your boots, you know? Cool. I was like, I remember... Not I was, cool, but yeah, okay, so it I'm is. I'm just a jeans and t-shirt guy, you know? And, like, I was thinking, like, is that good enough? I was like, oh, they're, they're a rock band. Like, fucking ACDC t- t-shirt and, and jeans will be fine. But I had my 
my peak cap, you know, and uh, yeah. I remember I had this big amp, a very big amp, so SVT Classic, very heavy, and I was like, isn't an a-hole move of me to bring this, but also show <laughs> that I got the gear, I got the yeah. balls, you know? Yeah. So I brought it, and I remember Tom and Dave helped me bring it up, and uh, it is like first day of school, totally, and I can imagine from their side, too, it's like they auditioned yeah. their friends, they auditioned people they know, acquaintances, and then yeah. there's random people like me, and it's like, you got to say no to us a lot of those people except yeah. one you know so it's and do you say do they say no right on the spot or is it one of those like let ralph let manager yeah, people, yeah. yeah thanks again for coming <laughs> we'll let you know that kind of thing yeah totally. it's totally like that, it yeah. has to be you know yeah like, it has it, to be. otherwise it's too band-aid off the skin sort yeah, of scenario you need a, a liam much. gallagher or a uh, axel rose to be like get you're the fuck out, out get you know? it <laughs> no 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 sorry yeah okay remember we're uh sorry. We're, we're keeping it we're, where's it we gotta we gotta watch out for buttons with rockers and all that stuff um okay so the damn truth you guys connect everybody's happy um first day of school goes well then what happens? Because it's you've now introed you who you are, right? And I can come with this, I come with. But now you got to talk ideas. Now you got to talk how am I going to support, but also bring in some fresh energy. That's right. Which means if you're coming into a band that's already been formed, is that a whole other bunch of issues totally. as well? 100%. It is, huh? Yeah. And so then it's now you're politicking. Now you're just learning how to navigate with other humans. Yeah, just like get you get to know each other like a family, like a team, you know? It's a lot like when uh, a player will join a new team. They've got to join this ecosystem that's already been in place, and they've been in a different kind of flow and vibe, and you've got to synchronize, see the lay of the land, and find your place, and then eventually comfort zones grow, and you become just a unit. That's amazing. I'm again. You, everybody who hasn't heard the damn truth, you got to listen. I mean, there's, you know, it's a, you got to experience that energy, and you guys together when you're rocking are just super cool. I remember us having a really ridiculous moment in time where the opportunity was to have you guys rock downstairs at the Lion, and I remember just being on the second floor looking down, and there was, I mean, there was nowhere to move. There was nowhere to move. Like it was just, I know it was like a more of a friendly thing than anything else, like for you guys to us. And it was just the coolest energy. I've seen you obviously in venues, but I, I remember that. Like, I love that idea. I love that. Idea. Here's a question for you. And, I, and we're going to get to questions after because we also, I got to get, we got to keep going. I want to get into a little bit of the sports energy and, and, and all this stuff. But do you prefer as a musician to be in smaller, tight, closer interaction with the fan like uh, you know like the, the people that are there to see you guys or do you prefer sort of bigger louder shows with a little more space to maneuver so that you might be able to i don't want to say get theatrical but you can you know you can express yourself with a little bit more room because you have more room on stage that's right um well, I'm a man of variety, so I like both, to tell you the truth, <laughs> man, because, you're like... So, you're, uh, you really are, yes, you know, you're really, like, so politically perfectly if you on have point. The, if you have the, the giant stage, you know, Paul Stanley said it, be said it best. When you're on a big stage, like an arena or a theater or something, if you move one step to the right, nobody's going to see that. you got to jump 10 feet to the right for it to look like you step to the right. So you really, as you say, you really got to give it more gusto. you got to perform. Is that right? Is that yeah, 100%. The, is that the and then I've noticed, too, like, when, when I go to shows, after I heard that my whole life, I'm like damn that guy's taking one step to the right it looks like he didn't even move you know so i try to do everything extra extra you know sometimes at the cost of personal injury but you know it is what <laughs> it you, is that's rock and roll yeah yeah <laughs> have you actually gotten uh you oh, got yeah. a couple off the stage we run into each other hit each other with guitars all the time like very hard <laughs> You fall off a stage, the band keeps going, and you oh, just yeah. got to crawl back on? 100%, yeah. Please tell it's me there's, con there's video out there's there. There's video of this. footage of it, yeah. It's, Were you it, it was a show in uh, St. Lawrence University in New York, and it was <sighs> just red cups. I'm so sorry. Like uh, spring break yeah. style kids, yeah. you know? Yeah. And at one point, uh, shirts <laughs> were off gone. in the front of the fans, and I just like was baffled. I fl fell off the stage. And I caught myself. I could have died because it was a pretty high stage. Nice. I barrel rolled, and where I landed on my roll was like I had balled myself up. So my spine and base kind of just rolled, and I ended up on my feet somehow and right back on stage. You barely see it, it's almost imperceptible on the video. 
Get out of here. I know. It's crazy. Oh, my gosh. Just that's pure exactly adrenaline. Pure <laughs> adrenaline. Meanwhile, then after the fact, you're in a body cast. Like, just because <laughs> yeah, you, you're you like survive. to work. Has it been hard all these years uh, to keep going and pushing and making sure uh, that you continuously are in conversation, you're on tour, people are still, you know, downloading old albums, new albums, or integrate, you know, interacting with you guys and, you know, buying into the, to what it is to be part of your sort of your, you know, ecosystem, being part of the damn true show, uh, merch, you know, like the whole nine yards that yeah. comes with being a band. I mean, you're, it's a, it's a, it's a mobile business. I say that with respect. I don't mean it like yeah, that, no, you know, but it is, yeah, I mean, it's, it's part of what keeps the whole machine going. Yeah. But is there, do you find it's just a question there's no right answer to this but do you find it uh you wake up and you guys all wake up with the same energy as you did five years ago uh, 10 years you know like is it always the same always the same in the sense that you are all pushing forward you just want to get back on tour you want to make some more albums you want to keep creating new music and enter and, and connecting with fans Definitely yes to all the last few things you said. We always want to be on tour. We always want to be moving forward, you know. But what you've just described is the job of it all, you know. How to make it seem like it's always moving forward when maybe we're not actually on tour right now, but we still have to have that content. We still have to uh, push the music, the products, the, the brand, the face of the band, you know, get the music out there. When you're on tour, the content comes in piles because you've got like eight, nine, ten photographers plus all the fans with their cell phones, videos. We're shooting stuff. We're traveling. Every night it's a different place. You get the architecture. You get the beautiful venues. You get all the other side bands and, and the new acquaintances you meet. But when you're home, you have to somehow continue that Energy. momentum in different ways. So that that is very much the job. Yeah, I never thought about that in that sense that the the, the fan at the show is creating content that's, yeah. uh, that part I understand, but that it's, it's creating that, yeah. that story with you. floating on it. You know? Yeah. They, they yeah, because every venue like does that. have such an amazing energy. Or yeah. It does or it doesn't, but it still has a different complete look, right? Yeah. So, and then it's really about the fan and what they're sort of putting out as what they're seeing from you. 100%. And also, cool. you know, if you want to talk algorithm a little bit, if you're traveling and posting from different geographical locations, you're yeah. hitting organically different markets as well all the time. So that helps too. That's cool. Yeah, no, I, I didn't think about that. So I like that. <laughs> uh, where did, so you mentioned a little bit of hacky. I like how you, by the way, you said yeah. that you went like, they got hacky. Hacky. Yeah, hacky. Play a little bit of hacky. A little hacky. <laughs> uh, where did uh, the sports sort of connect come from? Was that a mom and dad type thing? Um, brother and sister, you know, like where does where does the sports element come into your life? Because you are into sports, like Big time. there's no there's no denying that, and that is another reason again that we love having you here on the first half on TSN 690, and it's um, it's you do have that love of sport, and so my question is, where did sports come from, and how has it been integrated in your rock or lifestyle? Because it's like if you don't have this, if somebody doesn't come to talk to you about you, there's no chance I know it, that you're into sports. That's true. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, very much true. Yeah, we, we're definitely talking music and a bunch of other things. It's my deep sea uh, sports history. I love right it. Now. No, 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 but that's it. So let us know. So tell so us. So my mother's side of the family, huge hockey fans. My grandfather was like number one fan. Everybody knew him as, you know, hot dog, the Habs fan extraordinaire, knows everything, watches every game. That trickled down to me, you know. And when I grew up, in my hometown, hockey is not a sport in my hometown. It, you live, breathe it's hockey, religion. it's religion. You know, I remember being two years old on the pond with my hands taped to a chair, skating, you know. Wow. And you- Literally you taped? Yeah, literally taped as babies, yeah, and then they just set you off. Yeah, and, you and just, just like, sort of float with it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Just the Man, strength you think the that, You think that's flying in 2024? Not a chance. Not a chance. Not but a that's chance. the way it goes. And, you know, it works, though, because <laughs> all the dudes I grew up with, we went pretty far. I played double-A hockey. Uh, two of my friends. Is that right? Played, yeah, yeah. We, play, we, we went pretty far for the circumstances because we grew up playing on an outdoor rink. Not an arena. So right, makes a very big teams difference. Teams we played against had like three, four, five months extra per year to practice. Otherwise, yeah. we were practicing floor hockey or playing soccer in the outdoor hey, rink. the foot. On the grass. Amazing. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, well, so, okay, so I'd like to dig into hockey, but we're not going to. We're on the first half. We're talking a little footy. So you would use foot, you would you'd use soccer, football during That's right. the summertime. That's right. Right, like a lot of kids, let's be honest, most kids growing up in Canada 
and in North, you know, in most of North America until, you know, the last 15 years or so, 20, have, it was summer, yeah. you know, it was summer sport. It wasn't, yeah. you, you weren't doing your sport all year round, all the time, day in, day out, right? That's right. Um, which actually I still think a better athlete is one that is well-rounded and then sort of focuses when it's time. Um, That's a good point, actually. But, uh, well, I think, mo again, this isn't my theory. From most of the sort of the top athletes in the world, they all say the same thing. Being able to play other sports. I'm not saying be the best in each one of those sports, but playing other sports gives yeah. your body and mind. and mind other sort of, elements that you can bring into the one sport let's say you want to focus on That's and it very definitely true. helps yeah it's it's a it, i remember reading that and looking into it and it, it does make sense right yeah. um so when you were using soccer when you were playing you know playing football in the summers was there something that connected because it wasn't your parents it wasn't your grandparents everyone no. was talking hockey forget for for sure yeah um where did the love of football come from my love of football yeah. came from ea sports it's, it's in, in the game. game yeah i was a big Amazing. gamer i had a console i played all the ea games madden uh nfl fifa all of them but fifa apart from nhl was my favorite so cool and i happened to be just naturally good at the sport compared to everybody else in my hometown. So obviously that made me want to play it more than everybody. Oh, yeah, amazing. So when we'd go to hockey school in the summer in Newfoundland in Cornerbrook, we would also play football. And they would be like, damn, why are you in hockey school? You should be in football oh, yeah. school. Like you're more naturally adept at, at, at playing sport. football. But it just wasn't available to me. Was any of the European influence in these hockey camps and schools, because these those kids at very young ages yep. start traveling and they start yep. shipping them all over to yep. definitely get into the camps. There was a few for sure. Right. Yeah. Bad English. Bad at English. At that age, you know, because they, they're just but they're football, so young. But football was what was being used as almost a, a connector with their they teammates. Were the, they were the football players. Got on another it's crazy, level, but you, you know? see it but now. For hockey but you see it now in the NHL, and, and, yeah. and I always bring this up. Look at how they warm up in the yeah, circle with, with the, the ball. Football. And there's all sorts of football influence being, you know, sort of, disseminated into the NHL and all yeah, sorts 100%. of sports. Yeah. So that's so that's where those sort of connects came yeah, from. Yeah, it's one of those elemental sports, you know, football. If sports could be broken down to elements, fire, yeah. wind, water, football is one of those. Yeah, you can't break it down any more than that. You know, there's the P way we know. I love it, dude. <laughs> Woo! The elements. Uh, question for you, uh, and then we'll take a quick break, and we'll come back with a little bit more questions, some 12 questions, which we love to do. Do you have, I got to put you on the spot here, do you have a Premier League team or will you not commit? And I'm asking this because I don't think I've ever asked you this question. I figured I'd put you on the spot. Way more fun to sort of No, I love it. I love being on the spot. On the spot. Yeah. Uh, I was a Manchester City fan for a good part of my life after I moved to Montreal and really got into football. Okay. And uh, I even drove down to New York to watch them play against Liverpool at Shea yeah. Stadium. I, cool. I sat in the parking lot trying to leave the parking lot for four hours after the match, you know. Yeah. Uh, the whole the, nine, the yards, whole nine in yards. yards. Yeah, in New York. You know? And New it was York. amazing. And, and I get to spend a lot of time in the UK now, so I'd love to see more matches, but we're too busy, sadly. Yeah. After watching Ted Lasso, though, I have to say there's a little thorn in my side about City. You know, they really make them look snobby, yeah. you know, yeah. nose up, and it's like, oh, that irks me a little. <laughs> I, there's Well, when you dig into sort of the culture of football and you start to dig into all of those actual storylines. Yeah. Everybody's got an opinion on exactly. everybody else's team but totally. their own. Totally. Like, we talk about, you know what I mean? Nobody has, and almost nobody ever has the same story. Yeah. Nobody ever has the same reasons they don't like the clubs, or the same reason they support their clubs, or, you know, there's some of that in Europe, definitely, like, you know, granny or grandpa or this or that, they all, you know, you that's how it. I became that fan. Yeah. But why I don't like, ah, oh, there's always so many oh, other yeah, stories. Oh, dump truck loads. That's, that's, a, that's good. All right, great. Yeah. So I find, we, we got an answer on, on yeah. City. I love it. We're talking with PY uh, from The Damn Truth. This is the first half on TSN 690. We're going to go to a little break. We're going to come back, and we're going to talk a little more uh, football. We're going to talk a little bit more music. We're going to talk a little bit of, about some, some culinary things and also Ooh. what you might be doing across Canada. And then we'll get into 12 questions. We'll be back after this. Welcome back to the first half on TSN 690. I'm Paul, and we are joined in studio with PY from The Damn Truth. We are talking music. We are talking fashion. We are now talking Man City. We are talking football, hockey, and a little bit of his journey in music and where he came from and how he got to The Damn Truth. And 
where they were going from that. So, PY, thank you again for joining us in studio. I wanted to ask you a little bit about hot sauce. Now you're yeah. like, what? Are we talking hot sauce? Oh, I'll tell you why we're talking hot sauce. Because Mr. PY and the damn truth have some truth serum available. And we got to talk about this because this is done here. Yes. In Quebec, in Montreal. And it's with you guys all over this. So do you want to take a second, give us a little bit about why the damn truth chose to do a hot sauce? Because a hot sauce, I mean, honestly, like people have, a lot of people have hot sauces. Right. Funny enough, at the top of the show, I was talking about Ed Sheeran. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, he's involved with Ipswich Town and the whole nine yards. Okay. And he has, you know, he has a, he has a hot sauce. I did not know that. You didn't know that? No. Yeah, it's like Teddy I'll something. Have to try it. Yeah, 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 and it's like he, he's he's literally out there selling hot sauce. Wow. When he's on tour, yeah, he, it's a, I love it. You know, like as a, on the entrepreneurial side of life, there's nothing yeah. I, I it turns me on more than people that do more than one thing because it's super. It makes it complicated, but it also makes it super fun. Right. Why did you guys get into hot sauce? And tell us a little bit about the true serum. So Dave and I, the drummer, we are big hot sauce fire guys. Like when we're on tour, we each have our little kit for at the restaurants because not every country has um, hot sauce. You know, you ask for something hot and they bring you like chili flakes or Tabasco and you're like, oh, oh it's damn, true, huh? you know, so we learned, you know, it's been years we've been going out. So now we have our little side kit, you know, Pepto-Bismol, a couple sauces, a couple powder, of chilies <laughs> and cayenne. And, you know, we try a lot of sauces, and it's kind of a passion of ours. We talk about them everywhere we go. We try whatever we can, and just kind of a passion project dream of ours that came true, luckily, through uh, Mathieu Lepointe, the Papa Cachon founder, who is a fan of the band. He approached us, and uh, we went to one of his local uh, favorite watering holes and tried all his sauces on, the wi on wings, and we're just like, yes, this is who we want to work with. He's got a whole line of them. They're all fantastic we're Amazing. we just had fallen in love and then it took us about a year and a half to to like find this sauce we did maybe three prototypes you know yeah really wanting to nail the heat level because dave and i kind of like a higher and higher like eight nine out of ten hot sauces we can do a 10 out of 10 too but i mean on a daily daily basis but we knew that the common person would not no, want not that a chance at all you know right. and we did want them to move a little bit so yeah, you're, like, you're not trying like to you're not trying to punish anybody. Yeah, it's, we're not trying not to punish one of those anybody. Hot sauces. If you don't like spice, it's going to be really spicy for you. But if you're like you like a modicum of spice, I would say it's five six mid level out of ten. So it's, it's proper. Like again, yeah. I ha I I'm can't yeah. wait to get into this thing. But it's I, very flavorful. It's unique. I've never tried anything like this one. It, it kind of reminds me of like a smoky pizza sauce with like this depth to it. Like I, the pizza in this is because it's like smoked tomatillos and it's yeah. got a richness to it. But the owner, actually, he describes it like this. A hickory smoke bomb with arbol pepper and tomato. <laughs> <laughs> a smoke bomb. Yeah, that is yeah it's, very, it's based on my favorite hot sauce, which is from Mexico. You can only get it from Mexico unless you want to pay exorbitant prices is that right? on Instagram. Yeah, it's called Don Emilio. Okay. And it is so hot. It's a chili de arbol sauce. It's kind of like an oil, a chili yeah. oil. But Oof. it is so damn good. It's my favorite. Do you know sauce. what region in Mexico it's from? I'm not chance? sure exactly, but right. I've sent people to Mexico to get it for me multiple is that right? times, and they've had trouble. So it's definitely a specific region. Yeah. Okay. It's not it's just not floating like all just over the in place. The, you got to get it. The IGA of Mexico. You know. The, the IGA. Yeah. <laughs> IGA. IG, yeah. yeah. uh, amazing. Okay. Cool. So is this? Where can people get this stuff? You can get this at IGA. You can get it at... Oh, is that right? The, yeah, oh, yeah. A couple IGAs hold these and, and is the other ones from his line. There's a store, uh, Pico Peppers uh, on Duluth, I believe. They hold... They're like the Museum of Hot Sauce for Montreal. They have all the sauces. I tried one today from, uh, from another band that they actually made, Pico Peppers, uh, uh, the Venetian Snares. And... That one this is just like blowing my mind as well. So it's a nice spot to pick up new sauces that you're gonna really find. And in some love stuff with. that has some sort of connection. Again, there's a story behind them too. Yeah, it's exactly. Not mass -produced it's not stuff. just a mass there's produce. Yeah, exactly. Such a big deal. Yeah, that it's like going to the huge. record store and picking up a good record. You know, this this sauce they really care and there's respect. So you can you can get them there or you can order them off, off our website. Is that right? Yeah, and Perfect. we're what is the website? Thedamntruth.com. There you go, man. You got a plug, dude. This yeah, is business. Yeah. Business. 
Uh, that's amazing. Okay, well, thank you for that. And um, I think a few people here in uh, the TSN 690 studio got got some little gifts as well. So that's very exciting. And, and, and hopefully we're going to find something interesting to do uh, together as we discussed. Uh, Definitely. Uh, coming down the line. So that'll be very exciting. Um, okay, so now um, we found out who your team was. We talked about hot sauce. We got to talk to you a little bit about uh, touring. Yes. And the reason I'm bringing that up is because we actually, whenever you're on tour, I'm always, you know, we, we stay connected. Again, the world, it's very easy to do that now. But whenever you're on tour in Europe, I'm always like, get off the bus, get off the train, get off the plane, go to a football match. And I know touring schedules are pretty tight. Yeah. And it's one of those things. Um, but I think you were telling me you love to be on tour. Like, you love that, right? Yep. Because it's just such an amazing, give me a little bit of, just why is touring outside of, you know, where you live such an important piece of, uh, of, of what you guys do? Well, I guess it feels like when you're on the road, you're really, you're really doing something. Like there's a physical manifestation of it. You're not just sending something into the ether on a social media platform. Like you're actually physically doing something, which I think is really good for the human spirit to be up and at them, as they say. Yeah. But, um... Yeah, I would say that and just meeting all the people and trying all the new experiences and getting to share what we've worked so hard to bring into this world, you know, our new record, our, our, our music. Uh, it's, it's, it's literally the pinnacle of our life is to, to the moment when we hit that chord and the show starts and everybody's on the same page right there. On right away, kick yeah. Drum, you know? That's what it is. It, it actually gets everybody directly onto the yeah. same page. And we get connected in a way that, does not happen so much anymore you know even at concerts mm. now many concerts you're not even connected to each other anymore whereas That's we right. try so to important. keep that strong and back to your earlier question the smaller venues make it way easier because you're face to face you're sweating on each other yeah. when I'm when I'm singing I'm spitting it's probably hitting you you know so like we're connected <laughs> That's amazing and so speaking of tours um, what's going on right now there's something, there's something Yeah we're actually going on tour right? uh, next Give us week a little bit. Yeah. So what's up we're starting our Canadian tour. Give me more 24. Give Damn me more 24. Rocks Canada. Amazing. Amazing. Yeah, and where are you starting off? Starting in Ottawa. That's on the 31st. Yep. And we're ending uh, in November on the 17th in Windsor. But we're going Ottawa, Cornwall, Ajax, Toronto, London, Sault Ste. Marie, Sudbury, Thunder Bay, Winnipeg, Saskatoon, Lloydminster, Calgary, Edmonton, St. Catharines, Waterloo, Hamilton, Sarnia, and Windsor. If we don't add any more on the way. Yeah, because you know? that can happen too. Yeah, That's the we best. We might stop at a Tim Hortons bus the amps and let's ah, go. You know? Make a um, TikTok. <laughs> Make a TikTok. <laughs> amazing. PY of the Damn Truth, this is amazing. I love talking with you. I think we could talk forever, but I'm going to have to get us to our 12 questions. Yeah. So. We're going to drop our little fun time super music, and then uh, we'll get into 12 questions with P.Y. Letelier of the Damn Truth on the first half TSN 690. This is 12 questions on TSN 690 with P.Y. from the Damn Truth. You ready, sir? I am so ready. Question one, what is your favorite film? Ooh, uh, first thing that comes to mind, I guess, uh, would be, I don't even know. All right, go. Uh, I would say Shawshank Redemption, then. It's in my top three. So perfect. Counts. What is your favorite song or band? Ooh, okay. I'm going to go with favorite band, Oasis. Favorite sports team? Montreal Canadiens. Number four, favorite athlete, dead or alive? Brutal one. Saku Koivu. Number five, what is your favorite food? Meat. Number six, what is your favorite drink, alcoholic and non-alcoholic? Uh, my favorite drink is probably a Guinness and or actually a French red wine. Uh, and non-alcoholic, I would say water. This is the first half on TSN 690. We are doing 12 questions with PY of the Damn Truth. Number seven, what would be the first thing you would buy if you won the lottery? Ooh, the new 4Runner Toyota. Dream trip. Dream trip. Hmm, I bring all my friends and family to Puerto Lopez, the western coast of Ecuador. Number nine, how do you deal with stress? Uh... 
sunshine, maybe a little smoke, and stop drinking coffee every now and again. <laughs> Number 10, pajamas or no pajamas, rocker. Uh, no pajamas when it's hot, pajamas when I want to be cozy and uh, I'm stressed. Liz, there you go, amazing. That's a perfect rocker answer. What is your favorite fashion brand at the moment? Ooh, my favorite fashion brand at the moment. I would go with probably Fix Clothing. They give us a bunch of uh, clothes that we really dig. It's like, it doesn't even matter what they send, we love it. So I'll go with Fix Clothing. Amazing. Number 12, what is one thing you cannot live without? My wife. And that's a beautiful answer. Number 12.1, the sneaky one. I'm going to say football is, and you just give me one word to describe it. Yeah. So football is... Pure. Beautiful. What an amazing time. At PY, we went way past the time that I thought we were going to have. That's because rock and roll, you know. You just never know, Jazz man. Jazz time. Thank you for supporting Goal Initiatives. Thank you for being the person that you are. I love your band. I love you guys. I can't wait to dig into the hot sauce. And uh, very, very good luck with that tour. That sounds amazing. And we'll stay in touch. And everybody can follow all your adventures, yours and the bands on social media. That's right. We'll put it up in the show when it goes out. The damn truth. Everything. Yeah, exactly. And then, um, you know, we'll just we'll keep in touch because that's what we do. And again, thank you for joining us on the first half on TSN 690. Thank you for having me, man. It's a great pleasure. Cool. We'll be back after this quick break.